Borderlands is our permanent collections installation that explores American art through themes of place and migration. And the first piece most people encounter before they even reach the gallery doors is their bound. The work by Enrique Martinez Celaya was painted directly on the glass facade inside of the Scott Gallery's north entrance. There's a number of ways in which I wanted to consider Borderlands. I mean, what I didn't want to do is, is create a didactic work. The problem of, of a theme like Borderlands is it lends itself too much to a didacticism or a preachy or some sort of detached examination, which is not really the room, the space. The museum is not a space to do a serious detached examination of the question of borders, nor I had an interest in that. I want to be impl implicated in the problem. Mm -hmm. so, so for me, the, the idea of, of borders externally as they are represented in these birds, you know, these birds that respect certain borders and not others as they move across California and nor northern Mexico. So political boundaries are matter to these birds, but other kind of boundaries matter, geographical boundaries in terms of mountains or plains and things like that. So that was an external aspect, but it's still quite removed from me in some manner, although I, mean, I was intrigued by the metaphoric qualities of it. But I feel that um, the greatest borderland that we have is, is, is the skin between the inside and outside. So we exist in this territory of interiority, and then we move through the world in a certain way. So the self-portrait that is here was a way for me to to bring forth that very tumultuous borderland, which is our bodies, as, but bodies less in the biological sense, as bodies as, a, as an envelope that contains the interior and functions as a, as a borderland between interior and exterior and, and the dialogue that exists between it. So I was interested in that transformation in the museum and, and changing the skin of it was one way, um, in addition to conceptually changing it. But then I wanted the sense that as you move through the space, not everything is occurring in the perimeters of it. I want to bring the, our bodies into the experience and have markers in the exhibition. So I created, these are two migratory birds as well, um, and I wanted to bring them into our space um, and have the opportunity of people to interact and sit on them and experience the room in a different way that you experience this as you walk. Uh, and also, as I'm transforming sort of the sacredness of the space and painting in, in the actual building, there's something also about bringing the immediacy of being able to sit in an artwork, which is nowhere else in the museum you can do it, and invite people to the idea that the museum is a place um, for them. The museum wasn't sure what I was going to do until very late. Um, and I wanted sort of the spontaneity of, the, of how the material, well, this is a special glass paint, which I never used before. I was interested in learning that without any expertise, that kind of being an amateur while working was really important to me. And of course, when I first came to this building, the fact that you, you can't be in this gallery without seeing sort of the power of those mountains and what the mountains really stand for as the whole environment in which the Huntington is set. You know, the, 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 in some ways, the emphasis of borderlands tend to be uh, about space, about a certain location, a, a, an area that is, that is a, a perhaps contested or the lands around a border. And I wanted to speak out the movement through it. And so I chose two very different movements. The red, the red, move, the red lines here are the freeways of California. So the human movement as it moves across. So starting Northern California to Southern California. And then the green lines are in the same exact territory, the movement of migratory birds through it. And I wanted to see how different and related these two, these two things were. 
And I love the idea that come to a museum, which is about preservation and maintenance of these objects, and have something that wasn't an object, that was really tied up to the building, and that it was impermanent. And I wanted to treat it in the way I painted to echo that, that sense. And, and I speak about that ephemeral nature of the work, which of course, in many ways, resonates with my view of this sense of borders and borderlands and our movement through it. All these migratory birds, many of them, many of them barely make it by, by one, one migration. And then it's the offsprings that do the, 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 the next migration. So I was listening to two things when I was doing this. I was listening to Leonard Cohen, and I was listening to T.S. Eliot, Four Quartets. There's a certain rhythm and repetition to the four quartets, and, and time is so important in that repetition. But about, for about two years, I was deep inside of it. I couldn't, I couldn't see the world other than through the four quartets. And that coincided with the period that I was thinking about this work. The collision of, of, this, of these paths was very important in bringing the words from Eliot. It's a different way to have paths and movements. It was not so much an explanation of what's going on as, as a substrate, an emotional substrate on which I work. I have been in the, involved in the enterprise of trying to work, bring words and images together for a long time. I, have, I feel like all that I have studied for so many years about that have shown me that I have no idea how to do it. I feel, um, I see everyone who does it and I find, I, I see, I see the, the gimmick in, in it. So when I put him here, is, is not in any way a, a successful idea. It is an idea that needed to be, this thing needs to be inscribed with these words and what they echo. But also the quartets point to me how, how, how much is possible and how insufficient my capabilities and are to get to that place. And, and I like to be in that place of deficit because then in many ways opens possibilities, frees me in many ways to say what I'm doing is not really that good. And that both challenged me to do something better and frees me to think there's nothing precious about my wisdom or my skills or anything um, because I have Elliot as an example.